Hey guys, this is Pete Reed with Task Force One. We're here in Topeka, Kansas at the State Capital Area Firefighters mm -hmm. Association. We just completed uh, our Task Force One class, uh, Fire Ground Operations with Light Staffing. Um, we're here with some of our class participants and we want to uh, get their perspective on what happened this weekend and what they may have learned and how they, uh, what they thought of the class. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit. Hi guys, Terry Powell from Pittsburgh, Kansas. Uh, great class, if you guys get a chance to come out and, 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 and see it. Uh, from these guys, they blended the, the classroom as well as the fire ground very well, and uh, we, we can take a lot back to our departments uh, to uh, to teach some of these things that they taught us. Sean Price, talked to the fire department. It was a great class. We only show up with five personnel on the first out for call for a structural fire. So light staff is what we do, and this class really helped us out. Just refine our skills and make sure we get the job done. Spencer Prop and Illinois Fire Department. Uh, we came to class first day, we spent about the first day in the classroom. We talked about a lot of theory, a lot of things that we could fly out in the fire ground. We came out here the second day and they showed us that yes, you can do a lot with a minimal amount of staffing and have things in place for your, your second and third and fourth in companies. Really showed us what they knew and, and we applied it. It worked very well. And I'm Ron Richards, I'm the president of Task Force One. It was really a pleasure to be here to work with these guys. Um, you know, it's, 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 really, it's really hard to believe, you know, that as you listen to some guys from around the country, and these guys are an example of it, that they can do so much with so little in terms of, of staffing uh, and, and get things done. And what we, we really just try to show is there that, uh, you know, many times you, you have the, the, the stuff to work with, and it's really a lot of times about organization, maybe uh, making your apparatus work uh, a little bit better for you thinking things through before an incident, uh, asking for help, so on and so forth. So I, I guess I just ask you guys, what, you know, if you had to say one thing that really, one thing that jumped out, like the, the, the real take home, that like, I'm gonna take this and run with it. This is something that I could really, I'm gonna be really big, I'm gonna, this is the first thing I'm gonna tell my guys on Sunday night when I get back, or tonight when I get back, that this was beneficial. It, and it would help us, because we, can, we then know that that was important. Probably the first thing for me was the whole concept of the whole class. You can do a lot with a little. Properly organize your initial resources, your initial equipment, your initial guys. Uh, it just reinforced to the guys back home that you can do a lot with a little. That, I mean, as a whole, that, that's the biggest thing to take away from this. And that would be one thing that I would like to reiterate today. What do you think? Uh, really, mutual aid oh. stuck out for me. Looking at what we have in our area, what resources we have. I mean, we always have engines and ladders in the city, but we really don't have some of the other resources that the other departments do around us. And we may not have the best established mutual aid agreements that we can work on. Okay. They're calling for chiefs. That's something that I never thought about. Yeah, what did you think of that idea? You know, what we basically, really didn't. Yeah, basically, what we're talking about is, you know, there's never a, a, a reluctancy to call for another engine company or a tank or whatever. I mean, we, we, we have no concern about bringing a bunch of fire trucks. But meanwhile, we end up with a fire chief uh, running around, uh, you know, really getting frazzled because he doesn't have enough administrative help to help manage the incident. And, you know, so we basically suggested, why don't you set up your responses so that you do have that chief coming? Now, some of the departments already have that in place, but then there's others that that was kind of a foreign thought. Like, we would never think about the chief from next door. But what that does, it fosters a relationship where you're going to work together. I feel comfortable with you. You feel comfortable with me. You're going to jump in the, in the chief's buggy or, or chief's car. We're going to sit together. We're going to help solve this. We've become another set of ears, another set of eyes. And in, in some departments, we even suggested that maybe you don't even do that with a chief. Maybe there's just an administrative person that can help you. We use the term scry, but it's a chief's aide or technician. But, what, you know, chief, you sat in there and... and, and uh, we, we did that concept. I was sitting in there with you, um, and you know, you, you had some experience. You, you've ever been in National Fire Academy. So you, 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 you're familiar with that command component, but again, you're really scaling it down, even with, with, with a small response of single digits. Or what do you what do you think? I, I just think that when it comes to the when it comes to another back to the chief officer's thing, when it comes to to getting an aide or, or an assistant, you can't do it all. And the more you the more you can divide that up and set that off onto someone else. It makes you as an instant commander. You can sit back and, and, and in a lot of circumstances, if you're lucky, not even touch the radio. If you have an aide talking to the radio for you and you have another person to write stuff down. So sitting there and having a couple of chief officers to run the incident makes it go so much smoother. 
and I, I kind of kind of missed over here. Yeah. I got off track. I'm no. sorry about that. Light, the, the real take on what do you, what, you, you know, know? What do you? I think for me, being being light staffed with with our trucks, you know, and coming from a, a backseat guy, is, is you know, you got you got tools on your truck that that you don't think about using, and and that was one thing that. You know, utilizing the two and a half with the, with the gated wide, uh, you know, that was one thing that we don't do. Yeah. Uh, so that that would be some things that, that we could definitely look into and, and uh, see, you know, test it out and see if it works for, for our system for sure. Yeah. yeah great. And talking about the two and a half, you know, we did we did a lot of drills out here utilizing the two and a half. It's kind of uh, you know the ignored hose uh, on a lot of fire trucks because it's heavy. Um, and we maybe don't want to pull it in training or on the fire ground, but we did a little bit of work with the two and a half that kind of trying to spell the myth that one person or two people can't deploy a two and a half and actually work it through a structure. So what, what, how did that go? What, what are your thoughts on that, that concept? It, it's deceiving. I mean, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's not your first pull. So it, it's, you know, when you, when you pull it, you're like, man, this is going to be tough work. And it is. It's tough work, but, but pulling it correctly and, and, and trying to do it efficiently, I, I, think, I think you can work through it very well. You can throw a lot of water out with the two and a half. So make sure you were smart enough, harder than you through rolling that hose, pulling it ahead of you before the nozzle. Just make sure that you get it where you need it to be as fast as you can and not try to work yourself to death. Yeah, it's yeah. really good for those drills that we did there. Inch and three quarter line, we pull a lot of time, and I can tell you they're not much more work to pull that two and a half. And we run, we run, we run it at 200 psi on a 200. Uh, gallon minute setting on inch and three quarter. I can tell you dragging an inch and three quarter of their house isn't easy. But I can tell you it's not much harder to, to manhandle that two and a half. It may take you a little longer, but you, you bring a lot of bullets to the fire. And, and these yeah. guys prove to us it's not hard to to work a two and a half through structure. It's it's, it's not impossible. I think I think one of the, the you know we're talking about different size hose lines and one of the things that that uh, we talked about in the class was um, Basically, it's a return on your investment in terms of your personnel. We, we, we all get, we all said that we're, we're understaffed. So if you take your manpower and you divide it into the amount of water that you flow in gallons per man, you know we, we use the example if you're, you you had five guys and you you, you were pulling a, a a booster line that flowed um, 30 gallons a minute, that means you're getting six gallons per minute out of that manpower pool, which is not a very good return. Uh, however, we we did a, we we talked about. If you had a, a building that was well involved and you had a, you had an exposure problem, and your apparatus is set up with a master stream like we have up here, which flows, let's say, let's for argument's sake, say 500 gallons a minute, and a tailboard mounted deck gun that flows 500 gallons a minute, literally almost with one guy, almost the driver only, he could get both of those in a position. Let's say it's two people. Well, now it's 500 gallons per man versus six gallons per man. Talk about exponentially improving your efficiency. And it's about, we always said this, that the more water, you, the, the quicker you get water on the fire, uh, things generally improve. Um, so we, we prove that throughout the day here, that, that that makes the problem go away most of the time when you get the water on the fire. So we've had a great program here um, at, at, at the conference. Um, Kansas, uh, I will say this, you should be very proud of your firefighters. Um, we've been very impressed uh, by the level of professionalism, hard work, dedication, and work ethic that we've seen both here in the classroom and out here on the fire ground. Um, so Kansas, be very proud of your firefighters. Thank you for having Task Force One here. Thanks for letting us be a part of this conference. Um, and it's been our honor and pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much. Appreciate Have a great day.